Uh, my name is Christopher Jacoby. I live in Auburn, Nebraska, and I make violin family instruments for a living. Uh, I've been building instruments for 15 years. I attended the Violin Making School of America and got an apprenticeship at Peter Preer's shop. And for the first time, got to handle and fix the fine old Italian instruments that I try to use to inform my own making. I've built 120 instruments finished out the door. Making violins came to me from playing them. And after high school, I went out to the Bay Area and uh, I busked, I played on the street, um, I played with bands. I guess right around 9-11 in 2001, um, somebody who was not a bandmate but whom I shared a practice space with got strung out and sold my grandfather's violin. And so I had to go and find it and buy it back. And I looked around at what I was doing and decided that I wanted to have these instruments in my life, but it was time to do something else than trying to be on stage with them. The reason to get a handmade instrument is to have a life partner that you can grow with, that you can affect the sound of. The more delicate an instrument is, the more it projects, and a violin with no miking at all can be heard over a 400-piece orchestra, and there isn't another instrument on the planet that does that. So a well-set-up instrument, a well-built instrument, can make that that whole landscape of possible music enticing, and a bad instrument can just make it another chore. A fine handmade instrument starts with the natural materials. We work traditionally with maple for the scroll back and sides, and spruce for the top, but a tone wood is something which has grown on the side of a mountain where it needed to fight for light so that the tree for 35 feet has no branches and the grain in it is so dead straight because the longer those grain lines, each grain line is a, a winter that the trees live through are, the faster waves, Hertz waves, can, can travel through the instrument. Then we get to the varnish. So the varnish is the root of a lot of, of romance and legend. The varnish is there to protect the nice wood. If it's not too thick, it won't ruin the sound. So I take colophony, uh, which is a, a sap from a tree. I cook it until it has the color that I like, and then I combine it with nice linseed oil. And I make all my materials myself because the more experience I get, the more I know about how the materials will react and age. And I hope to push the materials to mimic the varnish on the fine old instruments that I'm emulating, that I'm in love with. Having a nice handmade instrument means that someone with the experience and the instincts to push those natural materials, the, the fine tone woods that, that I look for and use to their absolute limit, that's a, an opportunity to explore what the, the music, not just classical, but any music um, that we're looking at, what the music could possibly have to offer. I came to Auburn, Nebraska three years ago. We spent the weekend at a bed and breakfast in Brownville, which is 10 miles away on the river. And uh, my wife came over here with uh, our oldest, Olive, looking for milk in the morning and drove past this house. And she called me and said, we're, we're buying a house in Auburn. And I said, where's Auburn? And what are you talking about? And uh, she sent back pictures of, of this workshop had less windows then, and I agreed that we should find a way to, to buy the house. Uh, not only do I get to see instruments that I've built age and learn what I can from how they age, how they distort, what sort of work they need done um, in order to keep them sounding like a world-class instrument, um, but being present in the community locally means that I'm, I'm relevant. Uh, there is a community of players, um, especially in the Philadelphia area, that all play my instruments. And when I come to town, I get to see all of those instruments and those players and work on those relationships. And I really look forward to having more of that here in Nebraska.